Hello and welcome. My name is Amanda Rodriguez Smith and I manage university engagement for Global Robotics. Here at Amazon, we recognize that the future of tech starts now and that by investing in STEM education in schools and colleges, we're preparing the next generation of tech leaders to thrive as professionals into the future. It's for this reason that we are also very excited to host today's conversation with members of our Amazon science community and faculty from Hampton University. Hampton University is one of North America's leading institutions for engineering, computer science, and aviation. And now we are working together to establish a robotics degree program. And along with that, a fully equipped robotics research lab, internships and career opportunities, which we believe hand in hand support opportunities for students and faculty to learn side by side with us here in industry. Programming is underway, and it's through intentional collaborations like this that we're all working to ensure that the technology that we create is shared and shaped broadly by diverse, interdisciplinary scholars and innovators. And we are also deeply proud to uplift the legacy of innovation at historically black colleges and universities, including the visionary leadership who have made this initiative possible. We have many people to thank, including faculty members, instructors, mentors, and we also want to especially recognize our pioneering champions, Dr. William Harvey, president of Hampton University, and Amazon Robotics Chief Technology Officer, Ty Brady. So it's without further ado that I'm excited to kick things off, and I'd now like to introduce my colleague, Giovanna Thiebert. Giovanna is the Director of Business Strategy for Amazon Robotics, and she'll be leading our fireside chat with an esteemed panel of faculty from Hampton University's Schools of Engineering and Computer Science. So stay tuned to learn more about our partnership and opportunities to get involved. And of course, you can always visit amazon.science for the full scoop. So it's over to you, Joe. Thank you, Amanda, for the introduction and for the overview of our partnership with Hanson University. I'd like to take time to introduce our fireside chat participants. First, I'd like to introduce Dr. Elisa Harrison. Then I'd like to introduce Dr. Jean Muhammad. And finally, I'd like to introduce Dr. Demetrius Geddes. Dr. Harrison, please let us know some of your background and where you are at the university. Well, hello. My name is Alyssa Harrison, and I'll start off by saying I was always interested in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, STEM. Even as a young child, I always loved science. I majored in chemistry at, at an HBCU, Howard University, and minored in math. As a lifelong learner, I got an additional degree in computer science after graduating because of my interest in programming. As a spouse of a now retired military officer, I then picked up certifications in networking, <laughs> project management, and as an instructor as part of my STEM journey. After obtaining my master's in administrative science from George Washington University, I continue to work in technology and, and in industry and also in, as a federal contractor. After receiving my doctorate, I then continued on after we moved to Virginia and I purposefully sought out a role with an HBCU. My journey led me to Hampton University where I can help students, faculty, staff, and the community at large through my technical experiences in my role as the Vice President for Information Technology at Hampton. Thank you, Dr. Harrison, and it's a pleasure to have you on our panel today. Dr. Muhammad, please share with us what your journey was getting into tech and towards becoming a Hampton University faculty member. Um, I started out as a mathematics major, um, as an undergrad, and decided that that wasn't quite for me, And but I love math. And I looked over to accounting, did that for a little bit, and decided I didn't like it at all. 
Then I found computer science, took one programming class and I was hooked. It was interesting, exciting. It changed all the time. I had some wonderful teachers. And as far as I was concerned, that was going to be my major. And I've stuck with it all this time. I moved on after my undergraduate degree and I started uh, three computer institutes for women in Saudi Arabia. And that was an exciting experience. I took my children, my husband and all of us was there and it was, it was very exciting to see those women just so interested in technology that they were not allowed to learn before that time. And so I was there for five years, I came back finished my master's degree and went to work for AT&T Bell Laboratories. And I was with AT&T for 10 years and loved every minute of that. But my always my passion was education. So I decided to go on and get a PhD from Florida State. And this is where I end up. I've taught at Florida a and I've taught at Florida State and found my way to Hampton and I've been here for 16 years and I have not regretted it one day. I love what I do and I always wanted to teach at an HBCU. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing a little bit more of your journey and thank you for your energy that you bring as uh, Hampton's faculty leader. And Dr. Geddes, let's round with you. Thanks. Can you share with us what your personal journey was in coming into tech and how you became uh, a faculty member at Hampton University? Uh, well, uh, thanks again uh, for uh, having me uh, to participate in this uh, fireside chat. Um, so when you say journey, uh, when I look back um, over um, you know, my, my, my path to becoming a professor here, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, especially, you know, being the first in my family to go to college. Um, so as a young African-American um, male, you know, growing up in South Carolina, um, in middle school, it was all about being a professional football player. Um, um, and so, but at the same time, I, I always loved mathematics. Um, and so as a sophomore in high school, one of my counselors said, you know, what are you going to do if football doesn't work out for you? And I said, well, you know, I like electricity, I like math. And so um, I participated in an electricity uh, program uh, at my high school, really enjoyed it. Um, again, being the first in my family to go to college, I was, or to even think about college, I was thinking about maybe going and becoming an electrician. And my electricity teacher said, Demetrius, you're in pre-calculus now and uh, you like electricity, why aren't you thinking about engineering? And so I uh, said, what is an engineer? Uh, so going through that process, uh, looking up schools, and I found my way here by my home by the sea here at Hampton University uh, in 1994. And I met professors like Dr. Muhammad um, and, and others. And uh, so, <clears throat> you know, so I, I, you know, I got exposed to research at an at a, at a early uh, stage in my academic career at Hampton. So I enrolled as an electrical engineering major and uh, worked at NASA. And um, someone asked me about graduate school. I was like, well, what is what is graduate school? What do you do at graduate school? And so that's that HBCU experience that, you know, here you have first in the family to go to college, not really knowing what a PhD is, and then meeting professors like, like Dr. Muhammad, and in my case, Dr. Alfonso Smith. Uh, giving me that first opportunity to do research uh, with them at NASA. And so um, from Hampton, I ended up going to Georgia Tech uh, for graduate school. So, um, you know, and, and that experience again, um, you know, when, you know, if you think about um, many of us, you know, who are faculty um, <clears throat> going to graduate school for the first time, your family not really understanding, you know, that situation, it's a, it's a very interesting path. Uh, but it made me, um, you know, when it was time for me to graduate from graduate school, think think about that journey. And that's sort of what led me back uh, back to an HBCU. So I actually, after graduating, um, helped start an a engineering program at one of our, um, at Norfolk State University. And, um, but I always wanted to give back to my alma mater and I found myself 
back here at Hampton for the last uh, five years, leading the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Wonderful. Well, I'm glad your journey found its way back to Hampton. And just to pull on that thread a little bit more, you talked about um, doing research and working in different areas. You know, Hampton University is known as a leader in science education. Can you share a little bit more about its unique history and the legacy of that achievement? Um, uh, so Hampton, as you said before, and, and most HBCUs um, have a unique history. So, you know, being founded in, in 1868, uh, we were founded as a normal and agricultural institute. And so that normal part meant that we were actually training the next leaders for our community uh, to go back and be teachers. And so, you know, 80% of the people who graduated from Hampton went back to these communities, these, you know, one room shacks, and they actually were teaching newly freed people. Um, and so it's just funny that I found my way back into that profession as well, too. Um, but we also were, we were an institute um, and we, we were founded to learn by doing. And um, also one of our, you know, models is, you know, training the hand, the head and the heart. And so when you think about that, the training of the hand, the head and the heart, to me, that is actually engineering, right? So you got to be a, you got to be a critical thinker, but you also got to get, you know, your hands on something and actually create something. And at the root of, of the of the institute, that's what we were actually, um, you know, preparing graduates for, not just for teaching, but also um, actually doing real world innovation or, or, you know, using using those skills for for things like that. So, you know, one of our uh, famous alums, you know, uh, Booker T. Washington, who ended up uh, taking that principle and 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 and, and uh, starting Tuskegee uh, Institute as well, too. Uh, so it's it's been at the heart. So if you look at our history, you know, in, in the the nineteen hundred early nineteen hundreds, it was more trades work. Um, as we got closer to the mid nineteen fifties, we started the Department of Technology, um, and then by the sixties, we actually had you know an engineering program. Um, and then if you continue on in the eighties, we actually had uh, computer science, aviation. We got into uh, more and more. Um, the modern day technology as 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 you have it uh, uh, today and so now we're 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 ready for for machine learning and ai and all those other things as well too and we're excited that you're ready it's it is amazing that uh hampton had the foresight to make sure you're not only teaching about um science technology but also holistic leadership to your students. And you talked about hand, head, and heart. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm like, yes, engineering and, and leadership. So I, I am excited that that is still a key principle um, yes. or at least a foundation for the university. And and pulling on that, Dr. Muhammad, um, I want to talk about, you know, HBCUs are not only competing, but they're leading and thriving. How are HBCUs paving the way specifically around uh, sciences like robotics, machine learning, and artificial intelligence? Um, let me start by saying that um, HBCUs across the landscape are a very collaborative bunch, especially in STEM, computer science, and I know engineering as well. And so they are all now on the cusp of being very excited about being engaged into artificial intelligence, about data science and robotics as well. Hampton University uh, Computer Science Department was previously engaged in a collaborative robotic initiative um, when I first got here 16 years ago. And we had 17 HBCUs involved and some PWIs. And they did a tremendous a lot of work engaging our students with the interest in robotics. Now, moving forward, um, right now, the real interest across that landscape is artificial intelligence and machine learning. All of our HBCUs do not have that particular expertise, but they're collaborative with each other in trying to develop that. And we're excited to be involved in artificial intelligence. We have some faculty who are engaged in that. We, in fact, are a part of a consortium 
and a grant that engages seven HBCUs. And we are doing engaging um, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, and bringing in our students um, to engage in research in those particular areas. We are not where we want to be, but we are we are definitely have our feet in the pool and we are engaged with it. We're excited, we're trying to build more capacity in that. And I'd like to be able to add another piece to that. Our president, Dr. Harvey, has initiated our department and along with Dr. Harrison and have said that he wants Hampton University to have a major in artificial intelligence and machine learning. And we are going full steam ahead to make that happen. Once Dr. Harvey says he wants something, believe me, we make sure that we go forward and we make sure to make it happen. And so not just Hampton, you'll find that kind of interest, interest across the HBCU landscape. They are right there trying to get in that particular arena and make a difference locally as well as globally. Wonderful. I, you know, this is starting to paint the picture for, it sounds like a vision. And I wanna hear more about what's Hampton's vision for the future of technology and science research. And, and feel free to share any programs that you currently offer uh, at your university and also expand through what collaborations with industry or initiatives uh, like our partnership. And Dr. Harrison, I'll start with you. I'm glad you asked that question. It's a wonderful question. And I'd like to continue with what Dr. Muhammad just mentioned with the vision, because Hampton University's technology vision aligns with our overall strategic vision and what uh, some of the platforms and things that Dr. Harvey has put in place for the future to build on what we had were some recent network and infrastructure upgrades to support our students, our faculty, our staff, our research programs. And it is through collab excuse me, collaboration with industry partners such as Amazon Robotics. For example, we recently received grants through the Student Freedom Initiative to enhance our cybersecurity infrastructure. And that positions the university as a competitor for federal grants and other things that like the, that specify, for example, the National Institute of Stand Standard and Technology, NIST compliance. Through the National Telecommunications Information Administration, NTIA grant, we hope to expand Hampton University's broadband access by improving the university's internet access, our con connectivity through installations and upgrades of our broadband uh, facilities, offering services, equipment, digital skill instruction, training for our students, and furthering our broadband access and adoption to digital skills and remote learning opportunities through employment, entrepreneurship, through the minority businesses within our surrounding communities. So there's a lot of things that we want to do. And this investment that Amazon Robotics proposed at the start of this engagement furthers Hampton's cloud-based robotic uh, research, infrastructure improvements, and STEM-based activities to increase our overall talent pool, our pipeline, while supporting Hampton University's own digital transformation. With a stronger infrastructure, we will truly support the schools of science and the schools of engineering and technology, as well as the entire campus, because it's not just limited to, to STEM. You look, we have to look at business school, school of liberal arts and sciences. It will help us further the technology of our university. So there's a lot of things that come from this collaboration. And I was pleased to engage with Amazon Robotics at the start with so many individuals. Uh, we haven't mentioned one, Ty Brady. He, his vision helped our vision go farther. Definitely. And uh, Ty couldn't be with us today, but he definitely is excited to see the vision and partnership flourish. And, you know, Dr. Geddes and Dr. Muhammad, I'll turn it over to both of you to add if you um, see other additions and, and pieces to that future vision. Well, I, I think just, just to add to, to uh, what Dr. Harrison uh, said is, um, you know, robotics, and I heard Dr. Muhammad mentioned earlier, cybersecurity, all those are like um, multidisciplinary type programs. So artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotics, 
it's sort of bringing these different areas together. Um, so, you know, within my department, you know, computer engineering is, is very hot because the students actually get to see that they sort of sit somewhat in the middle where they, they have to have the software skills, they have to have those hardware skills, and, you know, th all those things are going to work together to help us innovate in the machine learning, artificial intelligence, uh, cybersecurity space. So I can see sort of in the future in terms of, you know, the momentum with having strong computer science program, engineering programs, and having students prepared for this multidisciplinary space. And, you know, Hampton is providing that platform uh, for our students. Definitely. And Dr. Muhammad, I'll turn it over to you if you have anything else to add for that vision. Thank you for that uh, introduction. And yes, I would like to add something to that. Uh, the Department of Computer Science has three undergraduate programs, which is computer science, computer information systems, and cybersecurity. We are a center of excellence through NSA and Homeland Security and cybersecurity. In addition to that, we have a lot of corporate partners that we have helped us get there, including Amazon with the robotics program that our students are so excited about. We've had several of our students go out in this new program and intern in the summer, and we'll look forward to some of them doing the same this summer. In addition to that, um, we are involved in a Google in Residence program that I would like to talk to Amazon about at some point. And so that program is where we have a Google engineer come on campus every fall. And we've been doing that for about seven years. Now their interest is the early student. They want to grab the freshman. So they provide a course for the freshman, incoming freshman, and they teach them and they do more than just teach them the programming skills. What they do is teach them how to do a technical interview. What does that mean? What, how to prepare themselves for that? And then at the same time, they get better internships, not just with Google, but across the industry. And that helps not just the freshmen, but they're engaged with the upperclassmen as well. Um, in addition to that, um, we have a pre-college program that we're very, very excited about. We've been doing that for about six years now. We bring in incoming freshmen and who have not had a lot of computer science. Some of them haven't had any, but they've chosen computer science as a desirable major for themselves. And if we bring them into the program without anything, what we have found when I first came to Hampton is that they struggled. And then at that point, they some of them changed their major. But by bringing them into the pre-college program, getting them ready, firing them up, making sure they come into that first programming course, knowing how to program that they did over the summer, we have found that our retention rate has tremendously increased. And so that, would, that has proved to be very exciting. And we've had many different types of corporations that have helped us because we don't want the students to pay. What we don't want the parents to do is to have to make a decision. Do I pay for their tuition or do I send them here for that program? So we have corporate, pro, pro, uh, we have corporate sponsors that let uh, them come for free. And so that has been an exciting program that we've had for the last six years. So those are just some of the things that we've been doing with our students and meeting the students where they are. Some of them are ready, some of them are not. But what we have found that they can learn to do this and they can get excited about it and they can go out into industry and graduate school and make a tremendous contribution. And if, if I can chime back in as well too, so one of the things that you, the partnership, Amazon partnership, um, so you guys have joined um, something that we've done with some of our industry partners in terms of participating in our capstone. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, this has been, you know, tremendous for our students. So one of the reasons why we want our students to actually engage with uh, industry is that they get to see sort of, you know, why they have been preparing why did they struggle through that curriculum in computer science or computer engineering or electrical engineering? Yeah. They get to see you guys. So, you know, I, you know, Amazon uh, mentors have been great. You know, they've given our students something to aspire to. Um, but it also, you know, makes them, uh, they work a little harder when they actually are, um, you know, doing a project that actually have 
you know, people in the real world, not just mm -hmm. Dr. Geddes uh, looking that's over right. and saying, <laughs> hey, you know, you need to get this together. So that's been tremendous. I uh, also would like to uh, give a shout out uh, to you guys for um, investing in uh, faculty at, at the Institute. Uh, so you guys have uh, made a commitment to help us um, uh, bring in an endowed uh, professor. And so that's going to that's going to definitely help as well too, you know, in terms of this journey. So, you know, seeing another engineer, um, you know, inspire the next generation. So thank you guys for, for making that commitment to the university as well. Now we are more than elated to, to have this partnership. And we, we find that uh, when we are partnering and it, the partnership is a two way, um, yes. we are investing in the faculty and the students at the same time, it's helping us as being the world's best employer to make sure our employees coming in, they're ready to go uh, because yeah. we have a bar that we continue to raise um, that we're striving to the, the, the next level of technology and, and science. So thank you all for helping us uh, bridge that gap for the, the partnership. And, and yes, Dr. Muhammad, we are always up for uh, the next challenge and making sure our mentorship um, deepens uh, with with uh, the students along with yourselves. So we've got one more question here and I'll, I'll open it to each of you. You know, for many of the students, the conversations like that we're having right now, uh, introducing them into opportunities and careers in STEM, what's your advice to those uh, tuning in that are seeking guidance or mentorship or advancement? Where do they start and what are some of the resources they can get access to? We have a lot of programs. Hampton University, I believe, is first in class about the programs that they have and how they outreach to the communities and not just in the local communities, the Hampton Roads communities, and bringing in middle school students, bringing in high school students, giving them that exposure. And that's across computer science, that's of course across engineering. It's even in the in the science and technology, physics, all of these areas. And to mine, I'd like to say that I go back to saying Hampton is first in class. For instance, we have a girls academy that we bring in young ladies and we expose them to computer science. So that's just one. We have an Apple coding for all that we haven't been able to do due to COVID face to face, but we've been doing it virtually. And so anyone can come in virtually and they can learn how to utilize technology. And many of them have never, don't even have that in high school. They've never done it before or middle school. Um, the engineering department, they have had a long-standing program with some of their core, their industry partners with a Verizon program with middle school boys. I was a part of that with them for engineering and computer science. There is just so many programs across Hampton's campus. That we do. Now, in addition to that, we have so many um, opportunities with high school days. Um, we have um, all of these kind of pro programs that they can just come in visit Hampton. It's been a little restricted now because of COVID, but they've been virtual. And so these students have been able to come in virtually and see what we're doing, meet all of the departments in STEM, not just STEM, on the soft lines as well. And they've business departments, all of us, and meet us, talk to our students, engage with our students. We're mentoring a lot of our students, uh, these the students in the community virtually. So they get to see students as freshmen, as sophomores, as juniors, as seniors, and see that they can do it. Now, these are students of color. So they're seeing our students engaged in research. They see them engaged in the mentoring part, in the programming part, in the engineering part. All of that is happening, whether we're physically on campus or whether we're doing this virtually. So there's been no time in my 16 years that I have not seen Hampton University reaching out to the community, talking to the students, bringing them in, letting them see what we do. But in addition to that, we are inviting them, if they see this video, to please just pick up the phone and call us, talk to us. 
we're willing to talk to them, bring our students in on Zoom or any other platform and engage with them and let them know what we're doing and invite them to join our departments. Wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. And we'll make sure to put um, your contact information for the, the department as well. Dr. Yeah. Geddes, you know, while we're rolling, you know, let's let's go to you next. <laughs> Uh, that that was that was really really good, uh, very comprehensive. Um, you know, again, I, I think about myself and the exposure. And one of the things uh, that so uh, I actually um, am the PI for NSF grant, and we actually have you know outreach programs. And mm -hmm. so we have our undergraduate students go out to you know local high schools or local middle schools, and you know pr either do experiments or present to them, have panel sessions to talk about that transition from high school to college. So there are different opportunities for students to sort of uh, engage. Um, and most HBCUs, especially the ones that have en engineering programs, they may actually partner with a local high school and start a, a, a National Society of Black Engineers junior chapter, so a Nesby junior chapter. And so you might wanna look uh, at some of the Nesby junior chapters that are in your area and you may be able to use that to connect to not not just HBCUs. It could be um, uh, other universities as, as well, too. Um, but I, I think, um, like you said, you want to be proactive. You want to reach out to the universities. And you definitely can uh, go to our website um, or, you know, be able to um, look up my, my, get my contact information and, and contact me uh, if you're in the local area. Um, but if, if nationally we have upward bound programs that partner with us, um, where we actually have what we call exploratory Saturday, where they, you know, high school, middle school students come to campus and the physics, chemistry, engineering departments actually, uh, demo, you know, put on different demonstrations for them. Um, and so I'm sure that those, those things exist in, in your area as well too, but you got to reach out to the local universities and, and see what they have going on because the pipe we need more students coming into this pipeline that's that's right you know, one of the one of the one of the things that um again with the national science foundation is how can we increase the number of students actually entering the pipeline you know surviving the pipeline is, a, is, is an issue but getting the numbers um, um to actually have an interest in stem is a national it's a national need definitely and that's a great segue. And Dr. Harrison, I'm going to yeah. come over to you. Oh, yeah, I perfect. I'm going to come over to you to. I wanted to piggyback on Dr. Geddes because that brings us full circle to why we started with Amazon. And the first thing that we discussed in that proposal of what, how we should engage, it started with internships. But then we, as Dr. Harvey would say, we dreamed a larger dream because we don't dream small dreams here. And it was establish a pipeline. So all of these different programs that we have help to establish a program. We like to embed some of this into there. Creating that capstone project, that is one thing, because that's a huge component. And that was part of that um, background and purpose for this. Ident identifying faculty support. And then we haven't talked about the Amazon and Hampton University uh, Robotics Research Lab. That is a visual on our second floor that brings students in and they're actually hands-on and engaged. That's something that came out of that as well. And those credits that were provided as part of this grant that we have with Amazon Robotics, let them back up their information. So it's not just, let's start it. You're helping us with the infrastructure. The uh, two other areas that we didn't speak a lot about were creating a portfolio STEM project. And that's uh, both um, schools are working on that. So in the summer, we're starting not just with high school, but we're going to reach back to middle school and bring mm -hmm. them into it. And lastly, but not least, would be the drone project. And Dr. Geddes, you could have talked a little bit about that yeah. because that partnership is coming out of School of Engineering. I'll throw yes. it back to you to just say what they're doing because you, Mr. Murray, is involved with that. Yes. Coordinate over the summer. So, yes, that's and that's definitely, again, that, you know, we actually have a, aviation within the School of Engineering and Technology. And so, you know, we actually train pilots, but, you know, um, uh, autonomous uh, vehicles such as uh, UAVs are hot right now. We need pilots for those. So we actually are, um, you know, working with you guys to host the uh, drone camps 
Um, and so that, again, is that, like you said, that pipeline. So that's not only uh, we're, we're using our students to actually train the next generation. So we got undergraduate students working with faculty members and helping, you know, K-12 or inspire K-12 uh, uh, with these with these drone competitions and drone camps. So, uh, yes, definitely um, a plus. That's another plus that I that I left out in terms of Amazon's expertise linked with Ham uh, Hampton's expertise in terms of aviation as well. No, it's wonderful. So I, I know we're out of time, but I want to just say thank you again on behalf of our robotics team, on behalf of Amazon for just continuing to work with us on this partnership and helping us see what curiosity spaces there are with the students, the faculty, and the community, um, and where we can continue to come alongside you of training our next leaders for what does it look like for that hand, head, heart foundation right. and engineering <laughs> and in right. leadership. Right. And so to close out, and I just want to put this out there a little bit. So Dr. Harrison, where can the students go to make sure they learn more opportunities there at Hampton? We have our a website, that's the Hampton University and Am Amazon Robotics, which will have a timeline. So it shows everything that we've done since we started, a calendar, who's on the robotics team. And um, we need to add the students, Dr. Geddes and Dr. Muhammad, because they're part of this team. <laughs> we need to add the Amazon robotics point of contact individuals because they're part of this team. And there'll be a gallery. So all of that will be provided on a link that we'll send to you soon. Wonderful. Okay. That's Thank exciting. you so much. Yes, it's so exciting. And thank you all for joining us and, and listening in to uh, our wonderful partnership with Hampton University. And with that, take care. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been an experience that we hope to continue. <laughs>